Welcome back to the Tasur Urals DGS Marine YouTube channel. Today we are discussing about the Ballast Water Management Convention. This video contains the IMO frequently asked questions, and these questions are very much important for the MEO Tasur Urals. You can make the notes side by side under the heading Ballast Water Management Convention while going through this video. And before we start the discussion, if you have not subscribed yet to the channel. Please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive the notification every time a new video comes up from our side. So, what is the Ballast Water Management Convention? The Ballast Water Management Convention, or simply BWM Convention, the full form is International Convention for Control and Management for the Ships, Ballast Water and Sediments, 2004, is a treaty adopted by the International Maritime Organization, that is IMO. In order to help the prevent the spread of potentially harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens in ships' ballast water, from the 8th September 2017, ships must manage their ballast water so that aquatic organisms and pathogens are removed or rendered harmless before ballast water is released into the new location. This will help to prevent the spread of invasive species as well as potentially harmful pathogens. IMO is the United Nations specialized agency with the responsibility for developing the global standards for ship safety and security and for the protection of the marine environment and the atmosphere from any harmful impact of shipping. When did the Ballast Water Management Convention enter into force? The Ballast Water Convention entered into force globally on 8th of September 2017. Which ships does the convention apply to? The convention applies to the ships registered under the contracting parties to the BWM convention, which take up and use ballast water during international voyages. What about the ships registered under the flag which has not ratified the BWM convention? Such ships may not be issued with the relevant certificates. However, Port states, which are parties, will expect the ships to comply with the requirements of the convention, so as to ensure no more favorable treatment is given to such ships. What do ships need to do now the treaty is in force? From the date of entry into the force of BWN convention, the ships in international traffic are required to manage their ballast water and sediments to a certain standards. According to a ship-specific ballast water management plan, the ships have to carry the ballast water management plan, the ballast water water record book, and an international ballast water management certificate for the ships of 400 GT and above. A ballast water management plan is specific to each ship. The ballast water management plan includes a detailed description of the actions. to be taken to implement the ballast water management requirements and supplemental ballast water management practices next a ballast water record book to record when the ballast water is taken on board circulated or treated for the ballast water management purposes and discharged into the sea it should also record when the ballast water is discharged to reception facility and accidental or other exceptional discharges of the ballast water and lastly an international ballast water management certificate for the ships of 400 gross tonnage and above this is issued by or on the behalf of administration that is the flag state and it certifies that the ships carries out the ballast water management in accordance with the ballast water convention and specifies which which standard the ship is complying with as well as as the date of the expiry of certificate next question what are the ballast water management standards so basically there are two ballast water management standards that is d1 and d2 the d1 standard requires a ship to exchange their ballast water in open seas away from the coastal areas ideally this means at at least 200 nautical miles from the land and in water at least 200 meters deep by doing this the fewer organisms will survive and so ships will be less likely to introduce 
potentially harmful species when they release the ballast water. Next, the D2 standard specifies the maximum amount of viable organisms allowed to be discharged, including the specified indicator microbes harmful to the human health. From the date of entry into the force of the BWM convention, all ships must conform to at least the D1 standard and the all new ships to the D2 standard. Here, the uh, definition of viable organisms is uh, of a new term to us. So you can see, you can watch another video which I have made on the definition of what is the meaning of viable organisms. What does the new schedule for implementation say? In essence, the schedule for the implementation which has been agreed by the MEPC means that compliance with the D2 standard will be phased, over, phased in over time for individual ships up to 8th September 2024. Over time, more and more ships will be compliant with the D2 standard. So, as per the chronology, from the 8th September 2017, the new ships must meet the D2 standard. Next, all ships must have the ballast water management plan, the ballast water record book and an international ballast water management certificate. The existing ships must at least have the D1 that is the ballast water exchange standard. They may also choose to install a ballast water management system or otherwise meet the D2 standard that is a discharge standard. But, but this is not a mandatory until the corresponding compliance date. The IOPPC renewals after the 8th September 2019. A ship undergoing a renewal survey linked to the ship's International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate after 8th of September 2019 will need to meet the D2 standard by the date of its renewal survey. The IOPPC renewal survey between 8th of September and 8th September 2017 and 2019. If the previous IOPPC renewal survey was taken between 8th September 2014 and 8th September 2017, then the ship must comply with the D2 standard by this renewal survey. If this previous IOPPC renewal survey was before 8th of September 2014, then the ship can wait until the next renewal survey which will be after 8th of September 2019. So this is the chronology which we have just discussed. So you can have a look and uh, understand better that how the IOPP renewal survey is carried out. And uh, this descriptive figure is having the complete explanation of the Ballast Water Management Convention which is complying with the uh, aim of stopping the spread of invasive aquatic species. What if the ship does not have a IOPPC renewal survey? Then the ship should meet the T2 standard at a date determined by its flat state but not later than 8th September 2024. Just now we have discussed what is D1 and D2 standards. But what is the real difference between the D1 and D2 standards? It is very simple. The difference between the D1 is that D1 relates to the ballast water exchange while the D2 specifies the maximum amount of viable organisms allowed to be discharged including the specified indicator microbes harmful to human health. This is a real difference between the D1 and D2. In elaborative manner, the D1 standard requires the ships to conduct a ballast water exchange of at least 95% of water by volume if exchanged far away from the coast. And the D2 standard specifies that the ship can only discharge ballast water meeting the following criteria. The following criteria are less than 10 viable organisms per, per cubic meter which are greater than or equal to 50 micrometers in minimum dimension. Second condition, less than 10 viable organisms per millimeter mil, per milliliter pardon which are between 10 micrometers and 50 micrometers in minimum dimension third criteria less than the one colony forming unit that is cfu 
पर हंड्रेड मिली लीटर ऑफ टॉक्सिकोजेनिक वाइब्रियो कॉलरे फोर्थ क्राइटेरिया लेस एन टू फिफ्टी कॉलियोनी फॉर्मिंग यूनिट दैट इज सी फ्यू पर हंड्रेड मिली लीटर ऑफ एस्कैरिया कॉली दैट इज एंड लास्टली इज लेस देन हंड्रेड सी एफ यू पर हंड्रेड मिली लीटर ऑफ इंटेस्टाइनल एंटेरियो रॉकी सो एक्सकेरिया कॉली इज द ई कॉली विच इज कॉमन इन द ह्यूमन डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम ऑल्सो सो दिस इज द डीरो स्टैंडर्ड क्राइटेरिया विच नीड्स टू बी फॉलोड सो हाउ द शिप्स विल बी कंप्लायंस एंड दे विल बी चेक द शिप्स मे बी सब्जेक्टेड टू द पोर्ट स्टेट कंट्रोल इन एनी पोर्ट और ऑफ शोर टर्मिनल ऑफ अ पार्टी टू द बी डब्ल्यू एम कन्वेंशन दिस इंस्पेक्शन मे इंक्लूड वेरीफाइंग दैट दे मे बी ऑन बोर्ड अ वैलिड सर्टिफिकेट एंड अप्रूव बैलेंस वाटर मैनेजमेंट प्लान इंस्पेक्शन ऑफ द बैलेंस वाटर रिकॉर्ड बुक एंड और द सैम्पलिंग ऑफ द शिप्स बैलेंस वाटर कैरिड आउट इन अकाउंडेंस विद द गाइडलाइंस फॉर बैलेंस वाटर सैम्पलिंग जी टू हाई ओवर द टाइम रिक्वायर टू एनालाइज द सैम्पल्स शैल नॉट बी यूज एज अ बेसिस फॉर अनड्यूली डिलेइंग द ऑपरेशन मूवमेंट और द डिपार्चर ऑफ द शिप नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हाउ आर द बैलेंस वाटर मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम अप्रूव सो दिस अप्रूवल इज टेकन केयर बाय द रेगुलेशन डी थ्री दैट इज द रेगुलेशन डी थ्री ऑफ द कन्वेंशन कवर्स अप्रूवल रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर द बैलेंस वाटर मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम बैलेंस वाटर मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम मस्ट बी अप्रूव बाय द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन टेकन इन टू अकाउंट फॉर द आई एम ओ गाइडलाइंस द पी डब्ल्यू एम एस कोड इंक्लूड द रोबस टेस्ट एंड द परफॉर्मेंस स्पेसिफिकेशन एज वेल एज द डिटेल रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर द टाइप ऑफ रिपोर्टिंग एंड कंट्रोलिंग एंड मॉनिटरिंग इक्विपमेंट सो विल देर बी एनी अमेंडमेंट टू दू एन बी डब्ल्यू एम ट्रीटी द आई एम ओ हेज अग्रीड दैट द एम ई पी सी सेवेंटी टू सेशन इन अप्रिल ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड एंड एटीन विल कंसिडर द अडोप्शन ऑफ द अमेंडमेंट टू द बी डब्ल्यू एम ट्रीटी ऑन द रेगुलेशन बी थ्री टू मेक मैंडेटरी न्यू इन फेज इन स्केड्यूल फॉर द शिप्स टू मीट द टी टू स्टैंडर्ड एंड लास्टली विल देर बी एनी फर्दर अमेंडमेंट्स लेटर ऑन सो द एम ई पी सी हेज रेकग्नाइज द चैलेंजेस may be expected with the entry into the force of a entirely new treaty there may be need of future improvements to the bwn convention the light of experience gained so i hope this uh, this presentation would have uh, made us understand what are the basic uh, uh, ballast water management convention and what are the d1 and d2 standards uh, how the ballast exchange procedure and all the uh, renewal surveys and IUPPC renewal and other surveys are being carried out and taken care of the PSC also in order to keep the seas clean. How many countries have signed up to the Ballast Water Management Treaty? As at September 2017, the treaty has been ratified by more than 60 countries, representing more, more than 70 percent of the world merchant shipping tonnage. So I hope this video is understood by all of us. so please do subscribe to our channel